and we are going to talk about FIR design by frequency sampling technique. Conceptually, it's a very simple technique. What it says is <coughs> that given H sub D, the desired frequency response, H sub D of E to the G omega, you know that H sub D of E to the G omega is periodic with a period of with a period of 2 pi and if you take if you sample H D of E to the G omega within one period let us say 0 to twice pi if you sample at a certain number of points capital N usually we ask for uniform sampling therefore our sample should be let us say we start from omega equal to 0 the next sample would be at this point where this angle is twice pi divided by N if we divide the total angular space twice pi into N equal intervals first sample will be here next sample would be here this angle is also 2 pi by n and the last sample you go like this the last sample would be here where this angle the total angle is 2 pi that side 2 pi n minus 1 divided by n so there are capital n number of samples and you know that these samples represent the DFT. So, let us call these samples <coughs> that is H D of e to the j omega k where omega k is equal to twice pi k divided by n k going from 0 to n minus 1 agreed capital N number of samples this we call them the DFT HK of a certain sequence HN. We say HK is the DFT of a certain sequence HN and if we find H of N by inverse DFT it shall also be of length length capital N and therefore forms an FIR filter. H of N shall also be of length capital N and if we design a filter with these impulse responses that is H of Z is equal to summation H of N Z to the minus N n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 then H of Z which is not H D of Z it is H of Z I made a mistake here also I will point out in a minute. So, this will be a filter <coughs> this will be a filter which approximates the desired frequency response H D of Z they are not identical why not because H D of E to the J omega was not specified to be a finite impulse response we simply said that it is period it is an arbitrary specification it can be satisfied by FIR can be satisfied by IAR but there is no label on H D of E to the J omega agreed and therefore if you if you invert H D of E to the J omega you get H D of small H D of N which will be in general be of infinite length. You are getting a finite length through the artifice of D F T discrete Fourier transform. Conceptually it is simple H of Z shall be an approximation to H D of Z because you are using only a finite number it cannot be exact but we shall show that the frequency response at the DFT points are identical 
for both h of z and h d of z. Now I, <coughs> I told you I made a mistake. Can you spot the mistake? The, no. The mistake is in the notation. h of k and h of z functionally if you replace z by k we should get h of k. That is, that is not something we get. Isn't that right? Therefore, I must use a different symbol for this. I will use simply a subscript 1, all right, without using this hats and primes and so on. I will simply use a subscript 1. So, you understand conceptually, it is a very simple, it is a very simple procedure. So, what you do is <coughs> h of n, we find out as the inverse DFT of the samples h of k. In other words, h k e to the power plus or minus, we are finding the inverse dft plus 2 pi n k divided by n summation k would be from 0 to capital N minus 1 and there is a factor 1 by n. Okay? <coughs> now, you know how life becomes complicated if we handle complex impulse response or complex coefficient digital filter. So, in all probability to keep life simple we would like h of n to be real. This is not guaranteed here because h k is complex, this quantity is complex, this summation that it shall be real is not guaranteed. But you notice one thing that when k equal to 0, k equal to 0 we have h 0 no no complex multiplication. Therefore, h 0 must be a real quantity. So, if h of n for h of n to be real, let us see what the conditions are. First is h of 0 must be real. The other quantities are complex quantities and if we can find two of them which are complex conjugates of each other, then we make sure that it would be real. Okay? So, I must have compare corresponding to h k e to the j 2 pi n k by n, I must have its conjugate. Now, let us see what its conjugate is. This is obviously in this summation, I must have its conjugate. So, therefore, h star of k e to the power minus j 2 pi n k by n, which I can write as h star of k e to the power j 2 pi capital N minus n k divided by n. Is that okay? You see capital N by n e to the j 2 pi any integer is 1. <coughs> So, I can write it in this form. This is the same as this. Now, do not you see that this is the n minus nth term in this summation? So, if h star of k is equal to capital H of capital N minus n, then our goal is achieved. Is that clear? The conjugate of this is this term. The exponential term corresponds to n minus nth term in this summation, k equal to capital, I beg your pardon, n minus, I have made a mistake, n minus k, I have made a mistake, this is n. The summation is over k, this is the n minus kth term in this summation, okay, provided h of n minus k, h of capital N minus k is equal to h star of k. Agreed? Then small h of n shall be real. Therefore, the conditions are h of n real if h 0 is real and second h of n minus k equal to h star of k. This is the story if capital N is odd. This is the story for capital N odd. For example, let us say capital N is 5. 
suppose capital N is 5, then we have <coughs> K would be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. This has been taken to be real. 1 and 4 are complex conjugates of each other. H, capital H of 1 and capital H of 5 minus 1, they are complex conjugates. 2 and 3 are complex conjugates of each other and therefore, the total quantity is real. Okay? However, if I take capital N as even, let us see capital N equal to 6. This is a point which I want you to understand very clearly because textbooks do not say, do not give a reason. <coughs> for capital, the, the distinction between capital N odd and capital N even is quite interesting here. If capital N is 6, then the values of K, capital H, values of capital H at 0, which has been taken to be real, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 1 and 5 are conjugates of each other. 2 and 4 are conjugates of each other. What about a capital H of 3? Why should it be 0? It should be real. It should be real. But now follow this carefully. Under the condition that H of n minus k is equal to H star of k, this frequency domain complex conjugation symmetry, this is called conjugate symmetry. <coughs> this reflects in the time domain as symmetry of the impulse response coefficients. You can very easily prove this. H of n becomes equal to H of capital N minus n. Therefore, the conjugate symmetry in frequency domain corresponds to a linear phase FIR filter, which is what we want, right? This corresponds to a linear phase FIR filter. Now, what kind of linear phase FIR filter is this? What type? type, one, type one. Not type 1. Symmetric even length is type 2. Okay. Therefore, for capital N equal to even, we get a type 2 linear phase FIR filter and a type 2 linear phase FIR filter has a 0 at small z equal to minus 1. It cannot be used for designing high pass filters. Has a 0 at z equal to minus 1. That means omega equal to pi. What does this correspond to? K. What does this correspond to? That is K equal to n by 2. Right? Therefore, capital H of n by 2, which is equal to H d of e to the power j pi must be equal to 0. Is the point clear? Because linear phase type 2, 0 at z equal to minus 1, okay, which means z equal to minus 1 corresponds to omega equal to pi and exactly it corresponds to k equal to n by 2 because capital N corresponds to 2 pi. The last sample is n minus 1. If you went further, it would have been 2 pi. So, the mid sample in the frequency domain, which corresponds to h d of minus 1, must be equal to 0. Agreed? And therefore, and therefore, for h of n to be real, for n even, the conditions are h of 0 real, arbitrary value, h of k 
well h of n minus k equal to h star of k and this is important capital H of n by 2 which otherwise if it was not linear phase you could allow it to be real but now it must be equal to identically equal to 0. Agreed? <coughs> this is an important point not always dealt with in the literature. <coughs> uh, therefore, my h of n with these conditions my h of n would be 1 by n if I have complex conjugate pairs then obviously it the sum of them would be twice the real part of one of them. Okay? So, 1 by n I must take care of h of 0 that is the real quantity I must bring it out plus twice summation the real part of h k e to the j 2 pi n k by n and if capital N is odd then the limit should be I should start from k equal to 1 and go up to not n by 2 capital N is odd so n minus 1 by 2 there is perfect matching between corresponding 1 and n minus 1 2 and n minus 2 and so on there is no middle sample. On the other hand if capital N is even then I shall have h 0 plus 2 k equal to 1 2 yes the n by 2th sample is 0 and therefore capital N by 2 minus 1 the same quantity real part of agreed. <coughs> and once you have obtained h of n depending on whether capital N is odd or capital N is even then the next step is to obtain h of z as summation h of n z to the minus n n equal to 0 to n minus 1 then calculate next step is to calculate capital H of e to the j omega that is equal to n equal to 0 n minus 1 H of n e to the power <coughs> minus j omega n okay and then plot it versus what you want plot it and see whether the tolerances are satisfied or not as far as the number of points is concerned it will be governed by the same formula for low pass and high pass that we gave earlier for band pass I shall give the formula in the next lecture <coughs> band pass and band stop I found out the, the required formula. Uh, it was derived in 1979 by two gentlemen I shall give the details later. But <coughs> once you obtain this then you find its magnitude plot it and see whether it satisfies the tolerance scheme or not. Suppose it does not what are the things that you can do? There is no guarantee I told you that formula is only an estimate. <coughs> you shall have to you have control over capital N agree that is one you can you can increase it but as you know as you know we are starting from an ideal filter HD so you want abrupt abrupt transitions from pass band to stop band and since we our all formulas are estimations we aim for the idea we aim for the moon and settle with the earth. Okay? So, we aim for the moon now there is no guarantee <coughs> that increasing n will satisfy the specs because of this nuisance 
of Gibbs phenomena. Gibbs phenomena is nuisance, not Gibbs. Okay? Because we are asking for abrupt change, there shall be overshoots and undershoots. And one of the ways, this also we shall discuss a little later, the ways is suppose you want a low pass filter, then what you do is there is a stop bend somewhere here. What you do is you do not allow abrupt transitions. In other words, you allow a transition region. This is pass bend, then you allow a transition region. This transition make it smoother rather than abrupt. And one of the things that is done in practice is make it linear. You could make it smoother, you could assume that it is a butterworth, kind of you could assume it is a Chebyshev. So, this is another way. In other words, if the obtained H of e to the j omega on the basis of your estimated capital N does not satisfy the specifications, then change N or change the nature or the shape of H d of e to the j omega, all right? And go on doing this iteratively till you get till you get what you want. The other thing that can be done is <coughs> the third choice that you have. That is why I said IIR design is much more elegant. FIR design is always an uncertainty factor. The other thing that you can do is you have HK as H of N minus K. They are they form conjugate pairs. Now what you do is after you have obtained this and you see that <coughs> you are very close to the specifications, but not quite. Then one of these pairs you pick up and perturb them. Okay? That is change H k to some H prime k. Then this also has to be changed. Agreed? The, con the deviation from linear phase, there is no deviation from linear phase. You still guarantee that because you are obtaining a conjugate match in the frequency domain. But this perturbation <coughs> maybe by 10 percent in amplitude, this perturbation may bring the desire, the characteristic achieved uh, obtained characteristic closer to what you achieve. All right. So, there are three choices. One is change capital N, change the shape of this or pick up one or more pairs of the frequency domain samples or the DFT samples and perturb them to obtain the desired. One of them will always work. Frequency sampling design is not as complicated as it appears and there are, there are standard programs available on how to proceed about this, step 1, step 2, step 3 and then uh, on the monitor you shall see the obtained frequency response. Uh, there are programs to compute the frequency response and so on and some simple formulas we shall, we shall derive. <coughs> but you notice that capital H, I have again made a mistake. Uh, I should have used a H1, capital H1, okay. You notice that capital H1 e to the power j omega k, which is capital H1 e to the power j 2 pi k divided by n, which is the same as summation Hn e to the power minus j 2 pi k n by n n equal to 0 to n minus 1 is the same as h of k, agreed? That is h d of e to the power j omega k, right? This is what is h of k and h of k is nothing but h d of e to the j omega k, agreed? And therefore, the, the <coughs> obtained frequency response is exactly equal to the desired frequency response at the sampling points, right? 
in between it is an interpolation that is between k equal to let us say 3 and k equal to 4 at k equal to 3 exact match k equal to 4 exact match but between 3 and 4 there shall be deviation and what one has to check is that did this deviation this overshoot or undershoot does not exceed the tolerance limits that is what one has to check a typical plot <coughs> A typical plot is like this. Let's say this is a case of a design of a <coughs> low pass filter, 0 to 2 pi. I have taken this frequency response and I have aimed for the for the ideal. That is, magnitude is a is a brick wall characteristic. Okay. So what one does is one samples it. Uh, don't worry about the number of points. One samples it at uh, equal intervals of time. And then, and then goes to the procedure. What you get after you go through the procedure, what is the number of points here? 16. 16. Agree? Because this is, this is 15. No, <coughs> it, it stops at 14. So, the number at 15th, it must be twice pi. And therefore, the length is? 15, 0 to 14, okay. You must be able to see by looking at this, <coughs> but <coughs> I must point out there is a mistake here, uh, which you will be able to find out later. But what is important at this point is to notice that once you obtain this 15 point <coughs> frequency response, <coughs> there is an exact match at this sampling points. In between there is an undershoot, there is an overshoot, undershoot, overshoot and so on. Uh, and here also you see uh, in the stop bend also there are and therefore what you have to check is the tolerance. Does it exceed the tolerance limit? Agree? You can say, you, you naturally you can say that if capital N is increased, well there is a better possibility of satisfying the tolerance scheme. Yes, in general it is so. But again there is no guarantee. You have to test at every point. Even if you bring two points closer, the undershoot may, may be higher or the overshoot may be higher. There may be a stronger <coughs> peaking. Okay? So one does not know. Uh, one, this is an, an uncertainty and you shall have to plot it. Again in plotting, see your computer, digital computer does not calculate a continuum of values. In plotting h1 of e to the j omega, you must take a huge number of points, at least 10 times capital N, at least 10, this is the rule of thumb, at least 10 times. Uh, you see, even if you take 10 times, in between two points, there may be an excursion. So, what one does is take, if this is a 15 point FIR, take 150 points, then increase then double it, take 300 points, plot it again. Are there substantial deviations? If there are substantial deviations, go on doubling the number till you do not get substantial deviation. Is the point clear? Okay. So, I have given a copy of this, you can <coughs> Xerox it. Now, we, we shall take an example. We will aim at a low pass filter, digital low pass filter with omega p is equal to pi by 2, half of the, at half of the base band and <coughs> assume that h d of e to the j omega is ideal linear phase. We start with this, ideal and linear phase which means that we assume that h d of e to the j omega is equal to e to the power if it is linear phase e to the power minus j omega tau, tau is capital N minus 1 divided by 2, agreed? This is for 0 less than equal to omega less than equal to pi by 2 that is the end of the pass band and 0 otherwise. 
Now let us see <coughs> how these samples are taken. Obviously in these samples you shall have to take the magnitude and also the phase that is capital HK in general shall be complex. But because of this assumption, because of the ideal assumption, the magnitude is 1 in the pass pen, it is the angle which you shall have to take care. And one has to be very careful in this angle because you are taking angle from 0 to twice pi, all right? And that creates problem where one can easily make a mistake. Now, <coughs> let me draw the diagram first. As far as magnitude is concerned, no problem. You will go from 0 to pi by 2. Oh, let us say that capital N is 17. We take odd. Then, uh, <coughs> what does pi by 2 correspond to? You see, the samples are at 2 pi by 17. Right? So, pi by 2 corresponds to 8.5 pi divided by 17. Agree? So, there is no sample at pi by 2. The last sample in the pass pen would be at 8 pi by 17. Is that clear? No. What does pi by 2 correspond to? You see, 2 pi by 17, for k equal to 1, this is the story. For k equal to 2, 4 pi by 17. k equal to 3, 6 pi by 17. All right? And there is no uh, 8.5. It can be either 8 pi by 17 or 10 pi by 17, in between. So there is a sample here. And this is the last sample in the pass band. Right? There are two pass pens now because you are going from 0 to 2 pi. Where did the other pass pen start? You shall have something like this where k equal to 4 is somewhere here and the other pass pen would be from 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. It extends on the other side of course. And this would correspond to 3 pi by 2 is 25.5 by 17 pi. Is that correct? 8.5 multiplied by 3. But there is no sample at 25. There is sample at 26 pi by 2. So there is a sample somewhere here. There is a sample at 26, one other, another at 28. The previous one is at 24. So between 24 and 26 would be the last, would be the first pass band sample for the second pass band. All right. So the previous figure that I showed where the number of points was 15 is very similar here. You shall have from k equal to 0 to k equal to 4, 5 samples. Then from k equal to 13, you see 25. 0.5 there is no sample. So the next one is 26 which corresponds to k equal to 13 to 16. All right. You do not go to 17. 17 is the last sample. Okay. Now what do you do with the phase? For the magnitude this is fine. These are 1 and uh, you see the other point is, other point is <coughs> since you are asking for linear phase. Therefore, it is guaranteed that h k star shall be h of n minus k. And therefore, in the computation, you do not have to go beyond k equal to 4. Its complex conjugates will be here. right? So, twice the real part h k, you go up to n minus 1 divided by 2. So, 17 minus 1 16 divided by 2. That is you go up to k equal to 8. But k equal to 8 falls in the stop band. You only have to go from k equal to 0, k equal to 1 to k equal to 4. Agreed? Now let us look at it in more details. The problem is with the phase. You see, as far as the phase is concerned, let us say this is 0, 
this is pi, this is 2 pi. We want the phase between 0 and 2 pi, okay. For completeness, let us say minus pi minus 2 pi somewhere here, okay. Now, we want the phase to be linear, that is what will be this phase minus n minus 1 by 2 multiplied by pi. What was the phase? e to the minus g omega n minus 1 by 2. So, at omega equal to pi it should be this value. Now, since phase is odd function, if we if we if we want to plot from minus pi to 0, then the plot would be some exactly this exactly this and this value would be would be plus n minus 1 by 2 pi. Clear point? Now, h d of e to the j omega is periodic which means its magnitude is periodic, its phase is also periodic. So, if minus pi to pi that is the baseband, this is the plot, then what happens between at pi? The phase must go back to this value and then go like this and extend like this. So, there is a phase jump of the difference between these two that is n minus 1 times pi agree n minus 1 by 2 pi minus minus this. So, n minus 1 by n minus 1 times pi at omega equal to pi. This is the point that has to be remembered carefully. You had a sample here and you shall have a sample here. Exactly at pi there are, there are no samples. So, you shall have a sample here, sample here. But fortunately, you do not have to go up to pi because omega p is equal to pi by 2 we have assumed. So, you will have to go up to this, but you require the phases of this to make to verify that they are indeed complex conjugates of each other. All right? Is this point clear? Right. Now look at the diagram for the particular case. Capital N equal to 17. I would like you to have a very close look at this. You see the <coughs> the cutoff point. Well, this is k equal to 1, 0 omega equal to 0, omega and k. This is k equal to 1. This is 2 pi by 17 omega. This is k equal to 0. The next one is k equal to 1. So, the angle is 2 pi by 17, 4 pi by 17 and so on. Pi by 2 corresponds to 8.5 pi by 17 which is there is no sample there as I mentioned earlier. So, the previous sample is 8 pi by 17 which means that your pass pen goes from k equal to 0 to k equal to 4. Then the rest is stop band, the middle point pi where the phase transition occurs. Middle point pi, pi corresponds to 17 pi by 17. So, it is exactly midway between k equal to 8 and k equal to 9. Is not that right? This is k equal to 9 and this is exactly midway. So, this is where the phase transition occurs and there is a sample immediately below pi that is at k equal to 8 and there is a sample at k equal to 9. And these lines, if this line is minus n minus 1 by 2 omega, then this straight line must be minus n minus 2 1 by 2 omega minus 2 pi. So, that at omega equal to pi, this is exactly the value that we mentioned n minus 1 by 2 multiplied by pi and this is exactly negative of that. So, these are the sampling points. It is a different matter that in the stop band, in the stop band you do not have to consider this, but you must construct the phase and taking care of the discontinuity, particularly for band pass and band stop filters. It is extremely important because for a band pass you will not have two pass bands, you will have 
four participants and you shall have to take values in between and therefore you should be able to construct the phase plot carefully. <coughs> Any question on this? I have constructed this very carefully. There are mistakes in the, in the book that uh, Johnson's book. This mistake I have corrected. You can find out what mistake it was from Johnson. Therefore, our HK, that is what you want. Our HK is HD of e to the power j 2 pi k divided by 17, this is the number of points that we have taken, is equal to, there are three ranges that we have to specify. One is the first pass band, the stop band and the second pass band. So, it is e to the power minus j, n minus 1 by 2 is 8 and omega is 2 pi k by 17. So, it will be e to the minus j 16 pi k by 17. Do you understand why how this comes? Okay. This will be the story between 0 and 4. In between it is 0. Where from? 5 to 12. The next one starts at 13 and goes up to 16 and the value there is e to the minus j 16 pi what would be? It was omega minus 2 pi so k minus 17 divided by 17. Is this clear? See what we are doing is this minus n minus 1 17 minus 1 by 2 that comes 8 then omega is 2 pi k by 17 minus 2 pi. This is what I have written here. Agreed? And you can verify that h k and h of n minus k are complex conjugates of each other. They have to be otherwise you shall not get h of n real and if they have to be then it is automatically guaranteed that it is a linear phase linear phase solution. Now, <coughs> once you have obtained this, then how do you obtain h of n? h of n is, if you remember, 1 by 17, then h of 0, that is 1, the sample is 1, the angle is 0, 1 plus twice summation k equal to 1, 2, n equal to 17, n equal 17 capital N is 17, 8, you should go up to 8, but the samples are, magnitudes are 0, beyond 4. Do you understand this? Between 4 and 8, the sam uh, between 5 and 8 samples are 0. So, you have to go only up to 4. Then real part of real part of h k e to the power j 2 pi n k by 70. No. <laughs> You see, you have combined h k with h n minus k. The sum is twice the real part of either. Agreed? A plus A star is equal to twice real part of A. That is what we have written here. All right. Now, however, h k is, we know what it is, e to the power minus j, what was it? 16. 16 pi k by 17. So, we substitute this. We substitute this, then we get 1 by 17. Well, why do not we write 17 h n? 17 h n would be equal to 1 plus twice summation k equal to 1 to 4 real part of e to the power minus j 
minus j 16 pi k divided by 17 multiplied by e to the power j 2 pi n k by 17. That is equal to 1 plus twice k equal to 1 to 4 real part of let us combine the two there is 17 in the denominator real part of e to the power minus j 2 pi k by 17 can be taken common 2 pi k by 17 8 minus n. In other words it is equal to 1 plus twice summation k equal to 1 to 4 cosine of 2 pi k by 17 8 minus n that that is h of n equal to this whole divided by 7 and therefore you can calculate now h of n. <coughs> How many points n equal to 0 to <laughs> h of n you have to calculate from n equal to 0 to 16 you must calculate 17 points and then and then do the do the frequency response first find h of n find the frequency response do not worry about the points at which you took the samples do not compute them because they will be exactly identical this is guaranteed by design so you compute in between between k equal to 1 k equal to 0 and k equal to 1 you have taken 17 points so your first computation will be a, will be for 170 points so between any two points take nine other points agreed then you will get 170 points plot it plot it this can be done automatically in a graph plotter subroutine uh, you can do it on the computer and uh, show, see the plot against what you want then you do the variations. Now some uh, simplifying expressions for the <coughs> transfer function hz you can calculate h of n you can calculate h of n and then uh, find out capital H of e to the j omega the alternative is there is a simpler alternative you do not have to calculate h of n you can calculate h of z directly from h of k you do not have to do the in between because if you write h of k n equal to 0 to n minus 1 I am making this mistake h 1 h 1 of z is equal to h of n z to the minus n then you write this as summation n equal to 0 n minus 1 write the inverse dft of h of n that is 1 over n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 h k e to the power j 2 pi n k by n then <coughs> z to the minus n. Now you see this summations n and k they are interchangeable because the variables are different okay. So bring this summation here k equal to 0 to n minus 1 and then write h of k this 1 by n let us take it out this, this term and this term both contain n and therefore you must sum up from n equal to 0 to n minus 1 e to the power j 2 pi k by n z inverse the whole thing to the power n right. This is a geometric series you can find the series and the result is 1 by n h of n is 1 I am sorry not h of n h 1 of z is equal to 1 over n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 h k what would be the summation 1 minus 
z to the minus n because e to the j 2 pi k by n multiplied by n is 1 very simplifying feature and the denominator would be the common ratio that is e to the j 2 pi k by n multiplied by z inverse agreed and <coughs> see this 1 minus z to the n is independent of uh, k and therefore you can bring this out 1 minus z to the minus n by n summation h k divided by 1 minus e to the j 2 pi k by n z inverse k equal to 0 to n minus 1. All right. So, you do not have to calculate h of n. In order to calculate h 1 of e to the j omega, you can simply use this formula directly from the obtained samples h k. Agreed? You do not have to go via media. Via media was gone through to introduce you to the concept. Finally, what the formula that you use is this. We shall simplify this formula further for frequency response that is h 1 of e to the j omega we shall further simplify the, you know, so that you do not have to handle complex numbers as little as possible. Now this is a linear phase it is guaranteed to be linear phase. So, we can take the linear phase term out e to the minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 omega the rest would be a real quantity which will be its pseudo magnitude and it is the pseudo magnitude that you have to compute. So, our computations will be further simplified and I shall do that in the next lecture, but I want you to notice something interesting here. You see h 1 of z is an F i r filter is not that right it is an F i r filter. The expression that we have got here is a parallel decomposition of the F i r filter and each block being recursive is not that right. In other words the F i r filter this, this was very exciting when people first discovered this, but they their hopes shattered to the ground, your hopes will also be shattered to the ground if you look at it carefully. Where is the pole? Where is the pole of where is it on the unit circle? Can you realize a filter with a pole on the unit circle? It will be unstable and therefore, it does not give you a simpler realization of the filter. But you know it is linear phase and therefore half of the number of delays shall be required. So use the direct method or cascade method. It is not a parallel recursive realization of H1 of C. Even if you could do this, no, I must tell you this story. At the initial stages, people did. They said, okay, please do not bother about the, the unit circle pole we will shift it slightly we will perturb the each pole slightly we will bring them inside the unit circle and then realize it. First they went through the optimization that is decide on a capital N the shape of H d of e to the j omega and perturbation of the coefficients of the of the samples in the frequency domain you have to take a pair otherwise linear phase shall not be guaranteed after doing that they wrote this expression and then said I shall realize this by recursive parallel method, but we will shift a slightly shift the pole inside the unit circle. Okay. Why should you do that? What is the purpose? Does it speed up the processing? No, because you still have n number of delays here and the number of delays here shall be capital N minus 1 plus N twice N minus 1. So, it does not speed up the process. Not only that if from 1 magnitude you shift to 0.99 the finite word length conspires to kill your enthusiasm completely. In other words all filters designed this way proved to be 
unstable. They couldn't get a stable realization. So people have people have taken this formula only for computation purposes. Even in computation, you must be sure because you are subtracting two quantities. You must use as many bits as are permitted. But we shall convert this formula into signs in terms of signs next time and show that h1 of e to the j omega computation simply means computation of a real quantity which can be either positive or negative. Okay? So our last class will be Monday.